Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and this is episode two of Darth Vader's Saber series, where we are going to design and 3D print Darth Vader's lightsaber. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and uh, find the official picture to work from. Ooh, Darth Vader's lightsaber. Bam. Okay. So personally, I think the the blades that have the uh, the gap, like this one, the gap between this piece, this black piece, and these uh, black bars look better than the blades like this. I don't know if that's my personal opinion or not, but I think that they look better. I do, however, like this picture. Um, this is another one very similar to it. I like that a lot, too. And this one gives us a lot of good detail. Uh, so does this one right here. So, um, let's see here. I think the official picture that we're going to be working off of for this series, at the very least, is going to be... I don't know. Maybe, maybe this. That gives us a good perspective here. We can see the kind of ridging down here towards the bottom. The cap that looks like it almost screws on and off. Um, all the details up in here. And the way that this is actually set up is different from the way that I had uh, started setting it up earlier. Because this actually looks like it's the, uh, the later version of the lightsaber. The earlier version of the lightsaber has the curved... Uh, where is it? Like this piece. I think. It was more similar to Luke's lightsaber where it's... I hate how it does that. It had kind of this curve in the front of it. But... I think we'll go ahead and roll with uh, wherever that picture went. Right there. So this is going to be the picture that we use to design our lightsaber. Now, uh, to get started in this, today we're going to work with this gray piece here. The back half of the tube. And this little piece down here, the, uh, I don't know, what would you want to call it? The little curved piece. Um, before we start, I'm just looking around to see if I can quickly find it. I have a little tape measure somewhere in here. Looks like it's disappeared on me. Alright, so we need to try to decide how big or round we want these parts to be. Last time I printed parts for any kind of saber build, it was a very thin uh, lightsaber, and I didn't actually like it very much. So I'm thinking of going a little bit thicker than that, maybe two and a half to three inches around would be good, um, in circumference at least. I'm trying to see if I have anything that would be good for that, or good to kind of figure out size-wise. But, you know what? It doesn't look like I have anything readily available to me. And I can't seem to see wherever it is I've placed my... Placed my, uh, object. My tape measure. So we're gonna go ahead and just go with kind of a... Two... I'm gonna kind of gauge it here and say... Two and a half inches will be a perfect diameter for what we want to work with. So, um, now that we know that, I'm gonna jump right here into Autodesk Inventor. Now, this is the cool thing about Autodesk Inventor. Autodesk gives all their tools to students for free. So if you happen to be a student, you can log in Autodesk, uh, go to their website, create a student account, and get professional-grade tools for absolutely nothing. The only downside is they are absolutely massive programs. I think this one's 20-plus gigabytes. So if, you've, if you don't have that much storage space, you might not be able to work with as nice of software as we're using here. But this is what I choose to use. You can use SketchUp and then export the SketchUp file if you want to. I mean, you can do anything you want. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with a new part. And uh, give it a second to load into the modeling view here. <sighs> Taking just a second. It always does. All right. So we are coming into our model here, and I want to look down in our corner um, I want to look down into the corner here. Oh, it's not showing up. Let's see here. Let's take a look at a 2D sketch and see what our dimensions are going to be in. Are we working in? Yes, okay, good. We are working in inches. Let's make this 2.5. And uh, just one second.
All right, there we go. I said take care of my phone really quick. I'm making all sorts of weird noise. Okay, so we've got a two and... Sorry, I did that a little quick. What we're going to want to do is, of course, we're starting by building the cylinder that everything's going to sit in. So we're going to want a circle. Now, the thing that I'm thinking here is that if we want the little bottom piece to seem like it would screw in, I'm thinking of making the bottom piece and giving it a... Uh, mm, I guess you would call it like make it the male piece, and then this tube that we're about to build would be the female piece. Um, so, we could either do that, and it would actually help a lot in the form of putting the two pieces together. Because if we want to put the two pieces together, and one of them is a male piece, one of them is a female piece, they'll simply seat into each other. Which means when we go to actually glue them together and keep them in place, or acetone weld them together if you're using ABS plastic instead of PLA, they will sit very true to each other in the way they're supposed to be oriented. Whereas if you just make them both flat on the bottom and you try to glue those flats together, you're going to have to do a lot of work to make sure that you keep those two objects um, concentric. So what we need to start with is our 2.5 inch outer circle. Now, I want the walls of this to be at the very least a half inch thick. So that's one inch of overall material. So we're going to have a 1.5 inch interior circle, which is going to give us five inches consistently around the outside of nothing but um, plastic. So now if we finish the sketch, we can come right over here to extrude this. Now I'm going to bring this up. I think the overall length of the hilt should be about 12 inches. So if it's 12 inches, maybe we should give it a one inch offset, and then make the total part about six inches in total, yeah? I mean, it'll be a decently sized blade, so maybe six inches in total wouldn't be bad. So, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll give it a one inch hole. Um, and what that means is that this hole is only going to be one inch deep, and now we're going to basically cover the top and keep going up. So if we just click on this surface and click on oh, right click and click on new sketch. We're going to get the same drawing plane and we can take our circle and uh, come right out here to the edge, 2.5 inches, and uh, finish the sketch and then extrude this maybe four inches up. Maybe we'll put a hole in each end. Should we put a hole in each end so that the, uh, the black piece can kind of seat into this as well? Yeah, let's do that. We'll make this four inches, and now if we check down here in the bottom, we've still got our hole down here. We come back up to the top. We need to do one more sketch. So let's right click, new sketch. These are going to be two concentric circles. One goes all the way out to 2.5. The other one comes out 1.5. And we finish the sketch and extrude this up one inch. No, not 41 inches, one inch. Like that. Oh, and we need to select face to extrude. There we go. So now we have a one inch extrusion on top and a one inch extrusion on bottom of a six inch long rod. And that was all done right here, right now. Now, what I'm thinking of is some 3D printers, and I'm, I'm doing this because I've seen this as a very common thing with budget 3D printers, which is what I have, is that they don't like to print very tall objects. Also, I don't like the idea of printing this with a ton of support material in one end. So I'm going to take a few steps back here, and I'm going to go into our extrusion for this piece here, and I'm going to edit it. If we brought it up four inches overall, I'm going to cut this back to two inches. And if you guessed it, I'm going to print this in two pieces. So it will have a little bit of a line in the middle, but that's mostly going to be covered by the black pieces that do run vertically, and those will be printed flat on the bed so they're not very tall. I personally don't like having very tall objects being printed on the bed. So these two pieces will be printed at the same time, glued back to back, and give us our object. Our six inch long um, rod. So that is actually all we need to do as far as the rod goes, and we'll just make sure to print two of these. So if you're using Inventor, I'm going to go over how to save the file and open it up in Cura. First things first, we want to save it as... And uh, let's go create a new folder in our desktop. Desktop 
new folder, um, Darth Vader's lightsaber. Bam. Open that up, and we will save this as our... Oh, I don't know. What's a good name for it? The uh, Lower Hilt Rod. There we go. So we've saved this piece as the Lower Hilt Rod. Now it'll reset the orientation, and we're going to click File, Export, CAD Format. This is important. Come down here and change this to an STL file, and hit Options. Make sure you're using your units in whatever units you are using in the model, or else it's really going to throw you off, because it's going to convert our 2.5 inches to 2.5 millimeters if I had left it like that. So make sure you're in inches, and we like format binary and high resolution. Click OK, and save this object in the exact same folder under lower hilt rod.stl. So the same name, you're just adding the .stl. Now, that has been finished. Cura. Cura is a free program. You can download it from cura.com, I believe. It might be cura.org. I'm not absolutely sure. They're powered by Ultimaker, so you can also get Cura from the Ultimaker website. And uh, it's basically just a free slicing program. All right. So here we are loaded up in Cura. I've got all my settings over here set up. Um, if you want me to, comment down below, and I'll go over how to set up um, your 3D Maker, uh, your Cura settings to the same settings that I have. And I'll also go over a few specs of my printer in the next video when I put up the actual 3D prints. Um, I'll probably touch on that really quickly and just say this. You can expect two of these videos a week. At least that's what I will try to do. Now in the first video, it will be what I'm doing here, where I am 3D print or 3D modeling and slicing the objects to prepare for printing. Because the second half of the video, the video that will come out later in the week, I have to record with a GoPro and my 3D printer, and it takes a lot of time to do. So if I can get everything done in the weekend and upload this video on Monday, by Friday you guys will have the video with all the parts printed and ready to go. Also, videos are going to start to get regular on the channel now that the uh, computer programming series is basically finished. There's one more video to go up on that, and then that series is finished. Everything else is something that I am doing with my own time and not something I am doing for a class. So jumping back into this... We're in our 3D uh, slicing program, Cura. We can come up here to the little folder and click on it. Open files. We know we're under desktop, Darth Vader's lightsaber, lower hilt rod.stl. We'll pop that open, and we've got an error. So in our STL file, we did manage to somehow jack it up, and we managed to turn it into millimeters. So let's jump right back over here and export our STL again. And make sure we go into our options. We're in inch. Okay. Let's try source units. I know we should be saving in source units and preview this. That looks the same. Um, okay. We should be we should be okay. STL save. Let's just see if we can override this and if it'll uh, fix it over here in Kira. So delete and load up over hill rod. No, we still got problems. See, because it's saying it's 2.5 by 3.0 by 2.5 millimeters, so it's still trying to save it in millimeters, which isn't good. Um, so coming back into here, we need to... Maybe when we save as, make sure that we're saving this in... Um, no, that should be okay. We know we modeled this in inches, so why is our export STL not working in inches? Especially because we set it up to do inches. Inch. Okay. Save. Yes. We'll try this one more time. Um, saving is an inch. And we've still got an issue. Alright, well that's very interesting. I've never actually had this problem with um, Kira before. And does it not like what we're trying to bring it in as? Do we need to convert over 2 millimeters? Which we very well might need to do, because I think that this program only actually reads in millimeters. So, let's pop into here, and tools. Um, 
or wait, it's under, not tools, it's under, uh, I'm trying to remember where it is. Uh, I haven't had to do this in quite a while, so I can't actually remember where to change all of my actual, like, oh, upload document settings. In here, let's go into units and make sure we're using inch. Um, maybe change this down to millimeter and just apply that, and hopefully it doesn't mess up our extrusions. Let's take a look at this. We're still extruding two inches. Um, save the part. And see if changing that is going to change anything when we export our object over here. It's weird that this is causing problems. I've never actually had these issues before, and we're still getting millimeters. All right, well, you know what? We will pop up and slice this here in a few minutes. Right now, let's go over and um, create a new drawing. I still wanna make sure this is still in, uh, see, now we're in millimeters. 63.5 millimeters. Should we remodel this in millimeters really quick? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. We'll finish the sketch. Um, save one more time. And this time, let's go ahead and export the CAD format with uh, our STL working in... Our STL needs to be working in millimeters. And let's try that. Save that, go in here, and open it one more time. Let's see if it actually works this time. It's really weird that, hey, look at that. We have probably, yeah, 63.5 uh, millimeters. That's right. So you can, it's going to be a big piece on the printing bed. It's going to be a large piece. Um, it's probably a decent cup on my hand. This might even be too big, but you know what? It'll look pretty cool in the end. Now, let's click on the object and rotate it around its red axis here until we reach 90 degrees upright. If you can't do that on your own, use snap rotation, turn it on. It makes it super simple. And um, let's see here, four hours and 34 minutes to print that. It's not gonna like it when I do this. Oop, wrong button. Uh, where are we, control V. Why aren't you... Fine. Duplicate object. There we go. It's really not going to like this. This is going to be a lot of print time. Um, If it's more than... Ooh, if it's too much print time, I might actually just cut it down and print the same model twice in a row back-to-back. -back. Going from 4 hours to 9 hours. It's not that bad. Um, But I think I might want to hit... 4 hours and 40 some on minutes... <sighs> I don't know. This this would probably be the best way to print them. Um, so we've got that set up. We've got our tube set up, and we've got it on the printing bed. One more thing with Kira. As soon as it's done slicing, gives us all of our official stuff, and it says ready to save. We're going to save it to the same folder that we're working in, but we're going to create a new folder in here and just call it um, G-Code. Just so that as our project gets bigger and bigger, we can find our G-code files a little bit easier. Save that as the 3S lower hilt rod and uh, open the folder to make sure that it's in there as a G-code file. Your computer shouldn't be able to understand a G-code file yet, but that's fine, the printer will. If you don't have a printer that reads G-code, you can get a printer that reads V-code instead. And I think there's even a Z-code as well. Um, so let's jump right back into here and create a new model really quick. This will be the last of the two parts that we do in this episode. And then we're on and uh, on our way to the next, the next part of the series, which will be printing these pieces. Now, to get started, we are working in, I believe, millimeters now. So let's start a sketch. Oop, not a 3D sketch. Let's start a 2D sketch on our vertical plane. This one here. And if I remember correctly, we needed a... Oops, so we're still in inches. Okay, that'll work. 2.5 inches. Um, finish. 
extrude this up one inch, save that, zoom out a little bit, click on the top face, new sketch, zoom back in, and we're going to do a 1.45 inch inner circle. That's going to give us a little bit of space so that when our glue goes in, we don't have some serious problems. And if you're really picky about it, you could probably do even like a 1.485 inch. Just anything that is really close to 1.5 without actually being 1.5. So we've got that set up, and now let's extrude that back up, and we decided one inch was how big we were going to be doing our internal circle, so we'll do that. It looks a little bit weird in this. It's just because it always does. And uh, we're almost good to go. The last thing I want to do, well, the last two things I want to do, is to put a hard edge chamfer, which I believe this model might not have, actually. We might be looking at a very rounded chamfer here, actually. Um, that's not a very good version of the prop to look at. That's a very childish version of the prop, but it, well, it's a cheese grater. Um, and that one's flat on the bottom. Okay. So let's look at our, where'd our official picture go? It's right, right here. So what I'm seeing here is a very slightly rounded object with the kind of little slits in it that we would normally see on, um, you know, on a, uh, like a thumb screw or something. So that's what I wanted to add into this. And I can do that by coming right here and creating a new sketch on this face that simply is maybe like a circle starting from this point and coming down ever so slightly. So maybe 0 0.15 inches. Finish that. And now we are going to click on that. And, oh, actually, we probably don't need to finish that yet. Um, let's do a circular pattern with this geometry around this axis. And, um, that work around this point? No? Okay, there we go. So we've got three of them, or six of them, sorry. Let's go with maybe 30. That's pretty good. And click OK. Now, with all of those selected, click Finish Sketch, Extrude, change right here to where it says Join to Cut, and make that one inch, um, maybe flip to Direction 2, no, Direction 1, uh, Symmetric, there we go, and one inch. Oh, does it want me to select all of those little faces now? Oh, it does. That's dumb. All right, well, let's run around here really quickly and grab all of our little circles. Oop, not that one. Dang it. Finish sketch. Um, extruded, cut. All of these little puppies. Boom, 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 boom. Do, 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 do. There's probably a better way to do this, but you know what? It's fine. This will work just fine for us. I'm gonna run right around here. Nope. Uh, deselect this face. There we go. And just finish running right around here, picking up all of these little objects, all the little circles, all 30 of them. And then hit that. So we've got ourselves a little thumbscrew looking um, end to our object. And the very last thing that we could try doing is clicking on this face and um, maybe even coming in here to a hard chamfer. How would this look to do a chamfer on all of those? Okay, so that would look like that. And now let's compare that to doing a fillet on all of those, because this is going to be a little bit more rounded. Looks kind of cool. That would definitely be smoother. So let's go ahead and grab all of these little edges. And again, this is probably really redundant and kind of boring to watch, but this is part of 3D modeling. This is part of building and creating with a 3D printer is kind of experimenting around with the object that it is that you want to print. Now, the way that I'm, I'm going to be filleting this, or yeah, filleting this is with such a slight fillet, a small fillet, that it'll be there. Visually, it'll look nice but the printer will not have a problem attempting to uh, print that without any support material. Because support material on a budget printer just kind of creates a very sloppy looking parts. So that, that looks kind of cool. 
I think that's kind of cool. That gives it an interesting little bottom on it, and it'll flatten it out uh, towards the bottom as well. So that is going to be our um, the very bottom of our hilt. We can file and save this as um, hilt bottom cap. <sighs> Let's see here. Hilt bottom cap .ipt and file export CAD format STL. We should be going back to maybe inch for this because I believe we're an inch on this model. And save. Let's pop Kira open one more time. And if we can get Kira to load all of our stuff right here, then everything will be working out just fine. So hopefully we don't have a problem loading this time. If we do, we know how to fix it. Hilt bottom cap, open. And we have the problem loading. Okay. So let's jump right back over to here and go to tools, document settings, units, change this to millimeter, apply, close, do something that would make the us uh, think that we are creating a new object just to change the units over, finish that. Um, save this, export CAD format, STL options, millimeter. I'm not quite sure why they're not wanting to save in an inch, but they don't want to save as inches. So we have to save them as our millimeters. Um, pop that back up in here, and we should have our hilt cap at full size, which we now do. We'll click on it, hit our rotation, rotate around our red axis until we're going to get, in this case, 90 degrees. And uh, let that whole thing go through its slicing. Alright, so we have finished slicing. That'll be a 2 hour and 51 minute print, and we will save to file. Desktop, Darth Vader Saber, G code, and save. Alright, so that is both of the pieces that we will be printing for this week's uh, second episode. And, um,. Everything we need to do to start Darth Vader's lightsaber build. So we've got the first two pieces printed. Um, they're kind of just baseline pieces. They're not that big of a deal um, as far as the entire lightsaber goes. And these black pieces will be covering the bottom piece a little bit as well. Uh, similar to on this lightsaber. So that's how we've decided to put ours together. It's not going to look exactly like Vader's because it's ours. It's our lightsaber. But for now... Uh, that's all we're going to be hitting up in this episode. Um, is there anything else? No, I don't think so. Alright, well, until next time, thanks for watching.